And I just want to clarify that I promise I was a good student. <laughs> right. We believe you, kind of. Welcome to South Jersey Girls. I'm Klein Aliardi. I'm Jane Feld. I'm Elise Natariani. And I'm Marianne Aliardi. Later today, we have an interview with New Jersey Teacher of the Year, Angel Santiago. But first, we're going to figure out who in this group was the teacher's pet. I will shamefully admit to being that person. Wait, that was you? Yeah. Really? Oh, good. I'm glad to hear I that. I mean, you that raised me, me, so that makes yeah, sense. No. Elise I or was, Jane, were either of you? Yeah, I was once told that I was mean and nasty and all the other teachers <gasps> thought so. Um, what? So Wait, I was, a teacher said all the other teachers think so? Yes. Yeah. Wow. It Wait, was that sounds grade. like bullying. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I think that I like, I, I just was a late bloomer probably. Like I didn't, yeah. I didn't shine in elementary school, believe it or not. I don't look back at elementary school and think it was awful. Oh, I don't I mean, think I don't it was either. Awful. I wouldn't say it was my like, I didn't peak in elementary school. Thank God. <laughs> You peaked in high school? No. Or you're still no. waiting to peak. Yeah, you're still waiting to Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Did you have favorite teachers? When I was in first or second grade, I asked my mom if Sister Joanella could come to our house for dinner because <laughs> I loved her. And I, my mom said yes. And I asked her and she said she couldn't. And I wanted to die. I was so oh, sad. No. Well, did cry. she... Was she actually not able to make it or did she, I was she no just like, idea. I don't want to do with this? I mean, to clarify, you're saying nun and sister because you went to Catholic school, right? Yes, I did. Oh, yes, and I did. Have... <laughs> and none of my children did. If that tells you the kind of experience I had at Catholic school. My dad went to Catholic school too. And most of us didn't because he was politely asked not to return one year. So really? Yeah. What do you do? I get different stories. Um, the one he sticks with is that he failed Latin. And so he took Latin over summer school and then passed it. And they still asked him not to return. So he just chose not to. Um, oh. I don't know what the real story is still. Yeah, yeah. But we were all public school kids. You know, so yeah, I was a public school kid in yeah. at Cherry Hill. And I remember being really excited to have the two male teachers in the school just because it was such a change, the fourth grade teacher and the fifth grade teacher. You only had two male teachers in your school? That is not unusual at all. In my grade school, we had one. And in my high school, I can only think of one, but no, there may have been two. In my high school, we had a bunch. Yeah, I think yeah. we yeah, had high school is different though. Like in elementary school, you don't find a lot of yeah. male teachers. Oh, I only true. had one in elementary yeah. school. Hmm. That's fair. Yeah. My parents were not involved at all in my education. Like, I don't think my mom knew there was a PTA. I think you, there used to be a wall, like you weren't friends with your teachers, but like they're my Facebook friends now too. And yeah, I will say when they were in grade school, I wasn't involved in their education. I didn't feel that that was my responsibility to be involved in their schoolwork. That was on them. But I was involved in their school. I was around a lot. I was like room mom and on different committees. We were very involved in the school. Um, but, and I loved, you had so many teachers, Klein, who were just lovely, caring. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Like I also I remember... Was, that at the end of every year, our gift to every single one of our teachers was a bottle of wine and a pie. Yep. And I'm now thinking that that had a large effect on me as a person because- Why? What do you mean? Because that's a great gift. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, the one thing I remember, the greatest thing I ever saw a teacher do was Mrs. Martino, when you would, this is second grade, when the class was dismissed, she stood at the door and she hugged each kid before they left. And it was just- so nice. Of course, you can't do that now. I was just going to say. <laughs> but it was just, that's how I see, see your teachers. They were just really sweet. My teachers were not. Nobody was hugging me when I left the class. See, my teachers weren't touchy-feely, but a lot of them cared very deeply. And they cared about either the students or the subject. And that was really nice. Mm. How did you know that? Um, for the ones who cared about the students, they just were really involved in asking us, you know, how we're doing, how we feel, noticing things. And some were just so excited to be talking about whatever the subject was. Like oh. I, I remember having, um, you know, science teachers who would just be bouncing off the walls to talk about rocks, which is why I love geology. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember one time, Klein, I don't even know if you know this about me. Did you know I used to teach English in a business school? Did you know that? No. <laughs> yeah. I, just for a, for a year. 
when I don't, before I had kids, uh, it was a business school. So nobody really cared about <laughs> what I was teaching. I was, uh, I taught grammar and I remember that I had a cl I was teaching a class on commas. And, and we remember, know how much you hate the Oxford comma. Yes, I do. I love no that on to her Oxford daughter. Comma. Yes. Thank you. Uh, but I remember the, the person who owned the school, this was like a for-profit school said to me, you know, you have to make it exciting. And I remember going in teaching when the night I was going to teach commas and just being like, commas are so great. And I was so, I was truly excited because oh they, they happen to have a purpose in your writing. And so when you do, and I excited these people who did not care about commas. They but, actually got excited about I'm, commas? I'm not kidding you. Not that they were that excited, but compared to all the other classes, they were like, okay, well, we'll give you a chance, Marianne. What do you got? <laughs> oh, a I love pity. that. <laughs> you know what I did the first night of the class? I read to them the directions for a Trivial Pursuit, but I didn't tell them what it was. And in Trivial Pursuit, if you read the directions, all of the, like the circle in the middle where you win, all those pieces have names that you've never heard of. I had them try to guess what the game was. Nobody got it. And I was like, okay, it's Trivial Pursuit. And they're like, oh, wow. And I explained what the words were. And I said, this is grammar. Like there's all these weird names, all these weird rules, oh. commas, but you all know it. You see it. You just, it just has weird names. You just have to learn what the names are and figure out the rules. And then you'll, you'll be wow. good at writing. Never I'm would have. <laughs> yeah. I love grammar. I love grammar. I mean, I really do. I like, you know, use it well. Not, not use it good. Use it well. Yeah. <laughs> No, you, you, took that, it, you took it way too far. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good joke, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that my, like teaching mindfulness is a thing now. We did a story yeah. not, not that long ago about it. Wasn't a teacher doing yoga with her kids, her students yeah. and all? Yeah. It's making me sad right now because my kids are just in remote school right now. Jane, you could do yoga with them, you know. Oh, I would if they would do it with me. <laughs> <laughs> Our... Things like that's still going on if it's remote. Carrie, my seventh grader, would be like running around the house doing a scavenger hunt and falling to the ground and doing push-ups and sit-ups. And wow, he said that was gym class. So can yeah, I join that's, that? Because that's it a, sounds yeah, like a that's workout. a creative, a creative teacher. Are any of your kids doing any interesting classes? Because I know me at at public school, we had all these really great electives that we could take. So I took a lot of woodworking classes and I tried to take auto shop, but they told me that I would smell like gas all day. So they put me in, I'm not kidding, cooking instead. I knew you oh. would take <laughs> it. And I didn't end up taking it anyway, because that's my schedule got changed when I went to that Spanish class at BU. Just to show my love of learning, I have signed up now for a Spanish class that I've been taking once a week. Well, let me know well, if you need any help. I didn't know that you spoke Spanish yes. or I would have had you speaking with me. Thank mine you. mine's I slipping will. a bit, but it's still there. One of the benefits of having children learning a language is we are talking French now. But nice. I will I will join your Spanish, but it will probably sound like Franish. I'll come <laughs> in, I'll call in for the French. I'm uh, oh, brushing cool. up on Rosetta Stone. I'm doing I mean, um, Italian and Rosetta Stone. Yeah, not going well. So Last you year, we had um, a French exchange student stay with us for a week. Oh, wow. Oh, wonderful Nicholas, who, oh, I loved him. Like, I, I was thinking maybe I would have one of my other kids go back to France and I could just keep him. I'm here talking with Angel Santiago, New Jersey's Teacher of the Year. How is that feeling? Are you freaking out? Well, I, it, it's been a quite a while since October 7th, since I yeah. figured out. So, uh, but I've been, you know, inching closer and closer to the reality of it. Uh, in less than a month, I'll be starting my sabbatical. But I mean, initially, it was surreal. I mean, it's still surreal, don't get me wrong. As Teacher of the Year, what exactly does the next year look like? Do you know much about what's coming up? Uh, so I, I've been working with uh, New Jersey Department of Education, uh, setting up meetings for several different departments. Some of them are related to my platform and some of them are just general departments that I think every teacher should have some knowledge about um, and just being kind of a, a teacher's voice with, with the decision making with the Department of Education for the year 2021. And you talked about a platform. Are there specific things that maybe when you talk to people either in education or maybe outside of education, things you think people should know? 
think a lot of people in the general public in, in general, they, they are surprised that as, as diverse and progressive as New Jersey is, we still only have 16% of our teacher population are teachers of color. And when you talk about men of color, we're even going down even further. Um, there is a lot of work to be done. And so that's one of the departments I'll get to work with is recruitment. And, you know, they could see my voice. They can hear my voice as being a teacher of color in the state of New Jersey. And once we can make some progress on that, when we talk about equity and just having people who look like our student population inside the classroom, so it will do wonders just for all students in general, because I do think it's important for, you know, all students, regardless of race and ethnicity, to have uh, different mo role models from different cultures. There's a common thing that I like to say is that, you know, we can find heroes in every culture. We just have to be exposed to them. And and that's something that I think is extremely important in, in, in not only the teaching profession, but other public service professions as well. Yeah, absolutely. That it's It's amazing how simple of an idea that sounds to be, but it's such a powerful message. When did you have your moment where you thought, no, this is something I could do, even if you didn't see people who look like you in this profession all the time. I kind of fell in love with the profession because I fell in love with the teachers that taught me. You know, I, I wanted to be a teacher probably from high school. The teachers who brought me along in the Violent Public School District, um, I think they had a lot of teachers that were in tune and kind of beyond their years when it comes to equity and whatnot before equity was a buzzword. Teachers like Mark Malamed, who, who knew that if I could get kids from all different ethnicities to work together for a common goal, that's going to be something that sticks with them for the rest of their life. And then other teachers of that same district were, were kind of, you know, plugging in and filling in the holes of and any anything that would economically hold me back or anything that would, you know, socially hold me back because I did have a, a mom that was you know, working all the time. And sometimes it was difficult for her to get me certain places. And those, and those teachers made, made sure that, that I would either get somewhere or had something. And then in college, I kind of had a professor who was, you know, just told me the implications like of being a male role model in elementary education. And then on top of that, a male role model of color in elementary education. Uh, her name was Dr. Bender, Dr. Donna Bender. And she kind of flipped the whole script and, and told me that I had a story that I had to tell my kids that it was almost like a calling, you know, that it was more than just a job and more than just teaching it was you have, you have the potential to affect people on another like social economic level. Absolutely. And, and that, I feel like that's so obvious now. What, what is your, cause you're still teaching for the time being for a little mm -hmm. bit longer, right? Absolutely. Um, Gloucester Township. Are you going into school to teach them or is it mostly online? So it, it's changing by the day. Uh, it's a Camden County. And so um, I've been teaching um, just remote students from September. Although our school district was a hybrid school district, we did have a lot of parents and a lot of students that opted to be taught in a remote setting. I, I did pretty well last year. I, I kept a consistent schedule when it came to remote teaching and remote learning. Okay. And so I felt like that would play well this year. Um, and so I opted to just take the remote students. And this was well before I even knew I was you know, teacher of the year. So I kind of mm -hmm. had a plan anyway in summer. Mm -hmm. So I asked to just stay on remote. Obviously I have the, the technology to do things that other teachers can't do. Yeah, I so, do. I want to just interrupt you for one second because people are listening to this and can't see you, but you have like a full on mic, like recording mic. You look like you're in a recording studio and I'm so impressed with your technology. <laughs> it's fantastic. Your kids must love this. Yeah, they think I'm a YouTube star. I tell yeah, them I yeah. subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, but no, like uh, well, I was teaching for in school for a while, so I didn't actually bring the microphone with me, but I still right. had the headphone. In school, I have access to different screens, so I had my whiteboard going yeah. with them on the whiteboard, and I had another screen over here. I thought we were getting better every day at it. I thought I was getting better. I know a lot of teachers were frustrated, but I obviously they're. They were learning uh, on the job training as we went along. So I felt as a whole, we did an amazing job. And uh, although I, I, I do, I do long for the days that I can see my kids in person and, and, you know, just give a high five or, a, you know, a handshake or a hug. Um, I do think that there are a lot of things I'm going to be taking from this, you know, how to, you know, streamline a lot of things so uh, that I don't have to spend hours and hours doing uh, mundane paperwork anymore. Right. Um, but, you know, we do, we do miss our kids. So anyway, I taught in the classroom for a while using remote. 
And then last week we were asked to go fully remote and only come into the building if we, if we truly needed to come in just to keep everyone safe. On any given day, I'll teach from the school or I'll come and teach from home. But at home, I just have access to a soundboard and things that- Oh man, you know, that sounds like a teacher's dream, honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you sound like you get very creative in these lessons. And the more that I see online from teachers who do some of these lessons, the more that I'm just blown away. I mean, I know not every teacher is going to be on, have the same style of teaching, but do you find that, at least for you, creativity plays a really large part in you trying to kind of capture these kids' attention? Absolutely. But I, you know, I want to say maybe this whole pandemic situation and teaching online is a new thing for us, but that creativity aspect, that's an every year thing for us. I mean, we always had to adapt and be creative because there is no perfect curriculum. There is no perfect, you know, uh, there are no perfect standards. We always have to be uh, adaptive and creative and uh, and and willing to re- reinvent the wheel at points. So, and as much as you think I might be creative, I've been borrowing a lot of things from other people who have been. I, I've been researching a lot of other teachers with the Nearpod and 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 Jam boards. I've seen other teachers do some amazing things that I will continue to use past this year. And I, I'm not taking any credit for anyone, anything that I haven't come up with. I've really been, you know, borrowing and stealing from my, from my uh, colleagues. And, and speaking of, you know, teaching those kids, do you have any tips? It could be big, it could be small for parents who, you know, now have their kids at home for such a long period of time. Maybe they're not so used to it. Maybe they're trying to help out teaching them as well. Do you have any tips for, for them? Absolutely. First, I got I to gotta really kind of throw a big thank you to the parents because uh, let's be honest, they didn't go to school to become teachers and they're kind of doing it on the fly themselves. But with the parents, I just have to say, you know, communication is key, just like any other year, but more so this year, just ask questions that need to be asked. There is no silly question. And in my personal aspect, I just need my students to be present. If they can be present, then I can take care of the rest. And if, uh, if, if, if we have any questions at any time, just, just, just contact your teacher. Um, and, you know, I know most of my colleagues, uh, if not all of my colleagues, are going to be more than happy to engage in any academic conversation that's going to make your student a better student. You know, we can get through this together. And we don't have to look at this as a year that anyone has lost anything, but another year that maybe they gained important skills they wouldn't have gained if we were not in this uh, current situation. Right, right. Your your kids must have been ecstatic when they heard the news. I mean, we're ecstatic, first of all, because you seem to be a very awesome teacher. And then on Thank top you. of that, you're representing South Jersey. So we love hearing that. But how, how did your kids react when they heard the news? I mean, I get the whole like, what do you mean? What, what does that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> I see out of 200,000 teachers plus oh, in the yeah. state of New Jersey, your teacher, Mr. Santiago, on top of being charismatic and very, very good looking and uh, extremely intelligent and funny, I'm also the teacher of the year. I say that to them all the time. I just That's listen. fantastic. <laughs> I, I, they need to know. They need to understand the gravity of the situation. <laughs> and so they were like, oh my gosh, now he gets another thing to boast and brag about. <laughs> so I use it at, at every moment that I can in my pedagogy. And I'm like, well, why do I need to do this? Because the teacher of the year told you to do so. Uh, <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so, no, and you know, it's something I get to joke around with them with, but they're really proud of me. I mean, even students that have, uh, they used a the video of students that I had prior um, and just to see that they were, they took time out of their day mm-hmm. to send a video about why they cared about me and why they, you know, why they thought I should be the teacher of the year. Um, that hits the hard strings. And they showed that to me right before I had to make my speech and I was bawling. <laughs> So I'm sniffling, making a speech to, you know, oh, man. people on Facebook. And I'm like, this is going to be on <laughs> social media forever of me crying and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> no, but I mean, it's nice to see that they're proud of me because I- I'm-, I'm proud of them every day. That's amazing. Well, we're so glad that you're representing South Jersey and we're going to see- be seeing a lot of you over the next year. And we're excited to see that. So thanks so much for talking with me today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. I, you know, I'm South Jersey bred and born, so I appreciate this very much. Thank you for having me. Okay, <laughs> third time's the charm. This is our third time trying to record this because this is the kind of week we're having uh, post Thanksgiving. But thanks to Angel for talking such a great interview. I'm just plowing through it. 
Sorry. Okay. Wait. One more time. <laughs> Never mind. All right. All right. I, I promise that we're gonna. I'm gonna do it this time. It's all. It's all good. We're good. Fourth. Fourth time is the charm. Thanks, to Angel, for such a great interview. And I just want to clarify that I promise I was a good student. <laughs> right. We believe you, kind of. Um, but especially shout out to all of the teachers who are putting in so much work during these super weird times to continue teaching. Um, and thank you to everyone for listening. Yeah. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because we have new episodes every Tuesday. So we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.